Hi, what I want to talk to you about today is how to solve academic problems for children and adolescents who have uh, high functioning autism, Asperger's syndrome, or some other similar difference. Uh, it's really critical to address this for uh, these children and adolescents so that they can be more successful in school and so that they can have a happy home life because the first thing I want to address is how to deal with homework. I know so many parents of uh, kids on the spectrum who are spending hours every single night trying to get them through all their work. And I don't think that's helpful for the child or for the parents and certainly not for their relationship. So one of the things we have to look at first is how to set up the school program so that the child on the spectrum doesn't have any more homework than the typically developing child. And in fact, if anything, they should have less because they have a disability. So therefore, um, we don't want to be having work sent home, say the child isn't completing all their work at school, so it's all just sent home. Okay, so your child didn't complete the normal amount of work, we're sending it all home, and it's now up to you as the parent to get all that work done with the child. Um, or perhaps they're just being sent home the normal amount of homework. There might not be anything extra to it. Maybe they did complete their normal work at school. But they're sending homework and it's taking you three or four hours to get through it and maybe a typically developing child, it would just take a half an hour. So something needs to change. And one of the things that I want to look at is um, reducing the amount of work. So for instance, I once heard the expression of Asperger time, which means half the amount of work and twice the amount of time. And that often happens because we're talking about children who have significant executive functioning problems. And, and so we don't want to then say, um, give them the exact same amount of work as everybody else. So perhaps they could get graded on the quality of work they do for a reduced number of assignments. Um, a simple way to think of this would be doing every other math problem, or every third math problem, or maybe every fourth math problem. Uh, and and the work needs to be adapted to the way their minds work. So kids on the spectrum are really uh, much better with things like facts and figures, fill in the blank, short answer questions, and not so great at writing an essay about the meaning of, say, the Civil War, or summarizing um, you know, the main point of a certain book, but they might be better at giving um, several facts and figures out of the book that would be able to demonstrate that they actually read it and got some knowledge out of it. Uh, so we want to work closely with the teachers at the school and the child's IEP or 504 plan so that the um, quantity of work is the same or less than other children their age are doing after school. And some kids actually really need to have it be so that they're doing almost no homework at home because they have such a strong, rigid division in their mind between work and school, sorry, I mean between uh, um, home and school. Uh, so that we want to uh, realize that that again is part of how they see the world. That isn't something that's that easy to change. And so uh, they really might need to have their school day set up so that uh, they've got some period of time um, at school to do their work. A lot of kids at junior high and high school level might get a certain kind of study skills class, which is in a sense a form of a study hall where they have time to do their homework and they might get some assistance from a teacher who's helping them stay on track during that time. And then by the end of the school day, they don't have anything extra they have to bring home, or maybe just something quite minimal um, that won't cause so much of a problem. Uh, so I think that is probably the most important thing to address, especially for those families who are spending hours every day trying to get their child through uh, their homework. Uh, another thing that needs to happen is, again, it's a reflection of the executive functioning problems, is we need to find a way to help the kids stay organized. Now oftentimes by mid to late elementary school, teachers are starting to put more of this onto each individual student. So although a first or second grader might be getting a lot of help from their teacher about what they need to remember to bring home and did they bring it back and getting things turned in, by the time kids are in late elementary, the teachers are turning that over more to the child. But this might not work for an autism spectrum child. So they might still need some assistance at the 
end of the day, making sure they bring home everything that they need to bring home. And then um, when they return to school, they might need help making sure that all of the work that they have brought back with them, if they did indeed have homework, um, actually does get turned in and at the right place. Um, and we also want to be helping the child learn a routine for keeping track of their work that they can continue to use throughout their life. So a lot of kids are going to be going out to college or the workplace, and so we don't want to utilize a system that always requires a lot of teacher and parent help. But it might be a system that teachers and parents could help the child learn, and then they could eventually become independent with that strategy. So for instance, an example of this would be an app on a uh, iPod touch, for instance. Now again, this is something that works best for kids who do have access to that kind of technology, but you could also use a paper and pencil planner for someone who maybe doesn't, or who would be so likely to lose it or damage it that it wouldn't be worth getting it for them. Um, so for instance, let's say you had um, an app or a paper and pencil planner, and each day the parent and teacher was helping make sure the right things got put into the planner. And you might even include personal appointments that the child has, um, certain regularly scheduled events throughout the week, because those kinds of things, again, as an adult, um, that person will be needing to keep track of those things. And they also need to be looking at their schedule of, you know, when do I go to this activity and when do I go to that activity when they're planning their homework uh, strategy. Uh, so if a parent and a teacher is helping on a daily basis put all those things into the planner or into the app and then helping the child plan, okay, on Tuesday I'm going to do more homework um, or work on this longer term project, but I'm not going to do it on Wednesday because Wednesday is when I have my horseback riding lesson and I don't have time. Uh, then over the time as the child is moving from late elementary school into junior high into high school and then later college into the young adult years, they could be developing a strategy that they need then less and less assistance to help them with. So they become independent with that strategy over time. But in sixth grade, the parent is still helping make sure every day, okay, what is it you have to do? Is it entered into your planner? Is it entered into your app? But by the time someone's in college, they'll have been doing it every day for all those years and they would be used to um, putting it into their own um, app. Uh, an app that can sync with a computer, again for those people who have that kind of technology, is really going to be great because that's something that you know more and more people are organizing themselves in that manner. It's not as common now to do it on um, just a paper and pencil planner. Uh, another thing that is really important about schoolwork is to have any assignment that is a big project, like a book report, so which involves reading the book, uh, figuring out what's going to be in the report, like so maybe making some kind of outline, um, doing the different pieces of the outline, maybe writing a first draft and then a final draft, or a a science fair project that involves researching different types of science fair projects and then designing an experiment and then doing the experiment and collecting the data and then writing some kind of report and making a visual of it. You know, there's a lot of different steps on this and so because of these executive functioning difficulties most autism spectrum kids um, are going to have a lot of trouble with those kinds of projects. Um, and they're not going to be estimating accurately how much work is involved Sometimes they would underestimate it and then just try to do it all the night before, or sometimes they overestimate it and basically get so overwhelmed they just don't even do it because they imagine it's going to be so horrible that they can't even, you know, think of tackling it. So they really need someone to help them break it down into chunks um, and do each chunk at a time and schedule that out on their app or in their planner. Okay, today I'm going to, you know, read up on different types of science fair projects and pick one that I'm going to do. Uh, because just as you had probably experienced as a parent of an autism spectrum child, you would know that, uh, for instance, the instruction of go and clean your room is often overwhelming because there's so many different tasks that have to be done to clean one's room typically that it gets overwhelming. It needs to be broken down into all the different steps of the task and that can be really helpful. 
Um, so it's uh, very important to think about how to break down big assignments into small chunks that get done over a period of time and almost always with support from a parent and a teacher, you know, most likely. Uh, so let's see, we've talked about um, dealing with homework and reducing the amount of work and we've talked about how to help with organizational strategies and with big projects. You know, so those are three of the most common things that um, I usually get involved in when I'm helping give advice on um, IEPs or 504s. Uh, there's a lot of other things that might be more specific to your particular child that have to be looked at uh, and uh, those are the things that have to be, you know, tailored in consultation with the people that you're working with on your team. Um, I would also like to add in that something that is often done in the school settings um, are things like a social skills group, and that can be part of their IEP or 504 that they're attending a social skills group. Um, but I just want to throw in a little um, plug for the fact that for social skills instruction to be most effective, the parent and the teachers that are working with that child need to be informed on the specific skill that the child is working on so that they can help with that generalization process. So a child might be learning how to do greetings or how to maintain a conversation, but if the parent and teachers that are working with that child every day don't know that that's the skill that the child is working on, the chance that it's going to generalize outside of the actual group itself is not that great. So I'd just like to encourage everybody who's working on these kinds of things with their kids or knows that they're attending a social skills group but don't know what it is that they're working on the social skills group is find a way to know what the curriculum is and to know what it is that week or that month that your child's working on so you can help them um, learn to apply that skill in real life situations and so that the and the regular ed teachers, special ed teachers, any of the teachers that are working with the child um, could also be brought up to speed on those skills. And that works a little more um, effectively in an elementary school setting where there aren't quite as many teachers involved, but it can't hurt to try to uh, spread the word even in a junior high and high school setting uh, about the particular skills a child's working on. Uh, so my name is Barbara Lester. I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I work with lots of children and adolescents on the autism spectrum. And if you're interested in more tips like this, please subscribe to my channel. Um, and feel free to let me know any other questions you have. I'd be happy to try to address those in future videos. So thanks for stopping by today.